Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with a weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Pouchette Matisse. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today and loads and loads of eye candy. Uh, all right, so starting with the first question from Francisca Nicole. I have four Louis Vuittons in my collection so far. I work in a doctor's office eight and a half hours a day, so my Neverfull GM comes in handy when I have a lot to bring to work. It's also my favorite in my collection and my most used. I use it daily. I just bought it in December though, and it's still in very new condition. Well, a coworker from the past who has some pretty nice Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and Chanel bags in her collection decided to comment on one of my Instagram photos that you can barely see my Neverfull in and said, get a new one, babe, same one in every pick. How would you take that? Because I was kind of pissed off. Like you wouldn't go around saying you should get a new child. You have the same one in every pick. So don't say that about my bags. <laughs> oh man, coworkers. What is it about coworkers and the fact that they feel so entitled to give you their two cents about whatever it is that you got going on even when you're not asking for their opinion, you're not soliciting their advice, and then they just feel compelled to tell you what they feel, you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't understand. We all know I've had my share of coworkers in the past. I've talked about them before, and it's just incredible. Uh, all right, so how would I take that? Um, plain and simple, I would just look at her and say, awesome, if you're gonna shell out the money for it, I think it's amazing, otherwise, don't worry about it plain, simple, to the point. There's no reason to explain yourself about why you use your bag or anything like that. I love the Neverfull. It is an awesome, awesome work toe. Um, I know I use mine all the time and it's a workhorse. You know, you throw all your stuff in there and that's the best part about a handbag. When you find something that works for you in, in different aspects of your life and you enjoy it and you love it, that, that's what makes it that much more, uh, that's what makes it so much better to be able to use that bag, you know what I mean? So I would pay absolutely no, no attention to what she's saying. I'd completely brush it off. Actually, it, it depends because if it was one of, uh, you know, there's one coworker that I told you guys in the past that just kind of gets the best of me. Um, I would say some uh, some choice words to her, but at the end of the day, it's like, why? Don't even, don't even give her the satisfaction of getting upset or anything like that. Just brush it off. Like what you're saying li literally means nothing. You know, just take it like a grain of salt and just say, it is what it is and you know as far as what you're thinking but to her just say sure if you're gonna spend the money for it absolutely I'll welcome a new handbag but don't don't even worry about it don't even think about it you know but because my bags um, like my Neverfull uh, MM and the Damia Azure that thing I if I want to I will use it every single solitary day and if someone's gonna say oh you need to take you know a different picture you have the same one in every um, you have the same one in every uh, in every one of your posts guess what I'm gonna continue to do it over and over again because I like that bag so much and kind of to drive a little bit of a point maybe it's a little bit of a bitch move on my behalf but you know what at the end of the day if you like it if you enjoy it it's all about what you want you know not to not to care what someone else says about your handbag so no uh-uh just tell her that and just brush it off and don't even don't even think about uh, explaining yourself or why you use that bag to her by any means whatsoever because it seems like she's gonna think what she's gonna think regardless of what you say. So uh, fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to help, but I would love to hear some of your guys's um, some of your guys' thoughts on this topic. Let me know. Do you have that one coworker that just drives you up the wall and you're just like, dude, really? Keep your opinions to yourself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyways, let us know in the comment section down below. Next question from Laura R. Do you consider handbags investments? Why or why not? Um, all right, so when it comes to handbags and investments, I know that this is a very popular subject on YouTube right now. There's a couple different people that have done videos on it. Um, but do I consider handbags investments? I definitely don't. And it's to each their own. But the reason why I don't is because when it comes to investments, I think of real estate, I think of stocks, and I think of items that you end up, uh, that you can make your money back, if not even more. Uh, and when it comes to handbags, especially bags that you're using, I don't 
don't see it that way. If anything, there's certain handbags that, that maintain their resale value better than others. Uh, but for the most part, unless you're going to be buying handbags and you're going to keep them in a temperature controlled room, never ever use them. And then 20 years later, you go to sell them. You'll end up getting what you paid for them, if not more, only because of the price increases that those fashion houses have. But if it's a handbag that you're constantly using or that you're constantly enjoying, no matter what, it's always going to, um, it's always going to depreciate, you know? So I don't see it that way. Like I said, everyone is different and you know, some people disagree with me and that's totally fine. Uh, but to me, an investment, like I said, is real estate. It's something that you end up, uh, that you end up purchasing and then you end up getting what you paid for, if not three times, four times over, you know, in a short amount of time or whatever it is. Uh, but handbags, I definitely don't see them that way. And um, I think that if it comes to, like I said before, certain handbags just maintain their resale value a little bit better but let's be completely honest when it comes to selling some of your handbags no matter what you'll always uh, very rarely will you end up getting what you paid for them you know sometimes you'll end up getting 50% of what you paid for for them or sometimes you'll get 30% it all depends on the fashion house uh, but no matter what they always end up depreciating in value it's kind of like cars you know they're they're great and um, I love my handbags but the reality of it is that I personally don't consider them to be investments unless it's something that I'm never ever going to use. I'm going to keep it there for 20 years and then I go to sell them, you know, in that 20 years time or what have you. So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Uh, let us know in the comments section down below, but hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Mini M. What do you think of the new Louis Vuitton Sorrento in the Emprunt Noir? Would you consider it or do you think it's too similar to the old Chanel GST? What do you recommend between it and the Montaigne in the same finish? Trying to decide between them for a work bag. Uh, great question. I will insert pictures of the new Louis Vuitton Sorrento, the GST, and the Montaigne so we have more eye candy. The new tote comes in at $29.50 here in the States. It's available in two different colors, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I actually saw this bag in person, and it is absolutely stunning. I've always been a big fan of the Montaigne, but I think between the two, I'd have to say that uh, this new Sorrento definitely has caught my eye. Um, would I consider it? Probably not, only because I do have the GST. If I didn't have the GST, I would definitely go for, um, I would definitely consider uh, this new tote. I think it's beautiful. And uh, as far as work bags go. At first I thought I was going to say the Montaigne because it does keep its structure. You do have organization and it also comes with a shoulder strap. Uh, but the more and more that I look at this uh, at the Sorrento, I think I'd, I might end up going for that one for a work bag only because I feel that it might be a lot more comfortable. The strap that it has or the shoulder straps that it has, um, it does have that little part of leather so I think that it makes it a little bit more comfortable to carry that way. Even though it doesn't come with a detachable strap like the Montaigne does, uh, it still has the organization and I don't think um, it's not going to be as structured as the Montaigne so if that's important to you, uh, this, this new one might end up losing its shape a little bit. It kind of reminds me of the Artsy as far as the size go um, but I just think it might be a lot more comfortable it's almost like a dressed up never full with uh, with uh, organization actually I shouldn't even say that because <laughs> they're worlds apart but uh, between the two even though I appreciate them both because of what they bring to the table this new toe it just seems like it's a lot more comfortable it still has the organization and it opens up very very generously so that way you can fit a few more items inside even though I am a big, big fan of the Montaigne, whether you go for the GM, the MM, or the BB, I think that it is a beautiful, beautiful bag. So that one definitely maintains its shape a little bit better. It does have the detachable strap, so that way it gives it a little bit more versatility. Uh, but uh, with uh, with this new toe, I don't know, I just it's very, very, very comfortable. And um, it also has somewhat of a friendlier price point than the Montaigne does. So it's all a matter of how much, that, uh, how much you want to carry with you or really how... Um, how comfortable you want that work bag to be because um, if you want something that's going to be a little bit softer something that's not going to weigh down your shoulder as much I think it might be this new tote but uh, the Montaigne is absolutely gorgeous nonetheless so I don't know if that ends up helping you out or not 
but those are just my two cents. Next question from Emily Josephson. I recently just purchased a Pichette Matisse and I was wondering, how can you tell if too much stress is being put on the top flap? Uh, well, first and foremost, major, major congratulations. So when it comes to the Pichette Matisse, for me, there's two different ways that I can tell that there's too much stress on this top flap. This is the one that's most known for cracking. Uh, the first one is if I have way too much in this front compartment, it makes it a lot more difficult to close. Actually, even if I have, uh, if I have too much in the front compartment or in the middle compartment, it, it makes it really bulbous and I'll really end up kind of um, straining this part of the of the bag in order to close it off so it makes it really really difficult to close uh, another way that you can tell that there's a little too much stress is that these guys right here these flaps here I like to call them their wings it starts to get a little too winged out if you know what I'm talking about so the more and more that you have in there this will start to kind of pop open so it, again it makes it a lot more difficult to close and any time that um, you're kind of pushing on this or you're trying to make it close, that's when this guy starts to crack. Uh, and we all know that this is probably the most, um, the, most known, the most known quality concern when it comes to this bag. I know I had that issue years ago when I had to get mine repaired. Uh, so I do try my hardest to refrain from overstuffing it, but we all know that's something that I do. I tend to carry everything in the kitchen sink. Uh, so usually I will try to put the bulk of my items in this middle compartment, but like I said, it doesn't matter because if you have too much in here and if you have too much in this front compartment, it makes it a lot more difficult to close this off and you're kind of pushing it forward in order to uh, in order to close it so that's the way that I can usually tell so I try like I said I try my hardest but sometimes it just gets the best of me so again congratulations I hope you enjoy your bag and hopefully this was able to help next question from Dev Altman hopefully I said that correctly is there anything you would change on your Chanel medium large if you could do you think it's the perfect handbag all right so here I have my Chanel medium large and the black quilted caviar leather and the silver hardware do I think that this is the perfect handbag I don't it just happens to be my favorite it happens to be the one that I constantly gravitate towards and is there anything that you would change if you could Oh man, there is one thing that I would change about it or I would alter it so I get the best of both worlds because I am greedy that way. And oddly enough, it is actually what I appreciate about this bag the most. And that is the double flap. <laughs> now, when it comes to the double flap, I know that it helps uh, to ensure that it maintains its shape over time, you know, more so than the uh, than the single flaps that they used to have, because the single flaps would end up fitting a little bit more, but the sides would start to cave in, and uh, it would just lose its shape completely on the bottom as time went by. So I do appreciate the double flap, and I talked about this in my review. I think it's awesome, but to be completely honest with you, I never, ever, ever use this back pocket. I mean, I shouldn't say never, but I mean very very seldomly do I use this back pocket sometimes I'll put my phone back there sometimes I'll put some receipts but for the most part I just end up using this main compartment here so um, as much as I appreciate it it does eat up a lot of the space so if there was a way that they can um, that they can kind of keep its shape on the sides without needing this double flap here, I think it would make it amazing. I think it would make this bag so much more user friendly because you can get away with carrying a little bit more with you. You know, so um, like I said, it's it's crazy because I appreciate it. I think it's great, but that double flap just eats up so much space, so much, um, you know, it, it eats up a lot of the real estate of this bag. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't, I don't think many people use this back pocket. I don't know. If you do, let me know in the comment section down below. But for myself, very, very seldomly do I end up using this back pocket. So <laughs> that's what I would kind of alter. Like I said, I wouldn't do away with it completely because I do like the fact that it helps to maintain its shape. It's not caving in on the sides or on the bottom or anything like that. So I think that's awesome. But um, to just kind of, <laughs> kind of get rid of this part, get rid of this completely and leave... I don't know, leave it back here. I have no idea how they'd go about it, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd end up changing about this bag. But I still love it. I still think it's awesome and it's still my favorite. And if they ended up altering that double flap so you have a little bit more space inside this bag, then, possibly then, it would be the perfect handbag, in my opinion. So hopefully that was able to help. Next question from Jennifer Chavari. Hopefully I said that correctly. I wanted to know your thoughts on the YSL Compact Trifold Monogram Wallet. I've been trying to find reviews or blog posts about it, but no luck. This would be my first luxury good item, or should I just go with the YSL Large Flap Wallet? Uh, great question. I do have pictures of both of these pieces, and I will insert them right now.
Both of these are great, and I think it's a matter of the types of handbags that you currently have. For example, if you tend to have smaller handbags and you have larger handbags, then the compact one might make it a little bit more versatile for you to use inside of your daily handbag, whichever one you decided to use for that day. Uh, but if you tend to have larger totes or larger handbags, then I would go for the large flap wallet because it makes it a lot easier. You don't necessarily have to kind of um, put it on its side to fit it inside of your smaller handbags or anything like that. But like I said, either one would be great, and I'm super, super excited for you. But I also wanted to talk about the pebbled leather in general when it comes to YSL. Here I have my card holder. This guy I've had for, I think, two years now. And if it wasn't for the hardware, uh, or if it wasn't for the hairline scratches on the hardware, you couldn't even tell that this item is two years old. Because when it comes to their pebbled leather, in my opinion, it is probably one of the most, if not the most durable um, pebble or textured leather out there. It just, it's incredibly, incredibly durable. It almost feels like it's scratch proof. There's literally nothing nothing uh, no type of wear on it so um, I just wanted to throw that out there just in case some of you are looking for a new wallet or um, if you're questioning YSL I think it is absolutely amazing but when it comes to yours in specific I think either one would make a great first uh, first piece and again I'm super excited and congratulations with whichever one you decide to go for but hopefully that was able to help Next question from Stephanie Saucy. Hopefully I didn't butcher your last name. Uh, if you could be any type of handbag from any brand, what would you be? For me, I would either be a Louis Vuitton mini pochette, fun, <clears throat> versatile, hard worker, or a Chanel Le Boy bag, edgy, chic, and powerful. Uh, all right, so I love this question, and both are great choices, by the way. Okay, so if I could be any type of handbag from any brand, what would I be? I couldn't decide between these two, so I wanted to bring them out, and some of you might laugh at me, that's totally fine, uh, but both of them are Louis Vuitton handbags. The first one, <laughs> oh man, the first one would be this guy. This is the Palm Springs Mini, and <laughs> the reason why is because even though I feel as old as Methuselah, and I know we talked about this a few weeks back, um, and age is just a number, this one makes me feel young at heart, you know, and I feel like this bag kind of embodies that. It's really fun and um, it just, I think that, that I think that it's kind of me to a T, you know what I mean? Because you can rock this at any point in time, at any age, no problem. So that would be the first one. And the other one um, is this beauty, which is the Pusha Accessoire. And the reason why is because it's simple, it's super, super casual, and there are absolutely zero frills about this bag. There's no bells and whistles or anything like that. And that's kind of how I feel I am, you know what I mean? Like, I am crazy casual, I'm always comfortable, and it's, it's almost like what you see is what you get type of thing, you know? So <laughs> it would be the Pichas Accessoire and the Palm Springs Mini. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what I thought about. Uh, but I would love to know if you could be any handbag from any brand, what would you be? Let us know in the comment section down below, but fantastic question. And the last question from Steph Loves LV. I know you love your Celine Nano, but do the handles annoy you when getting in and out of the bag? Do you ever use the handles or do you only use the longer strap on your shoulder? Uh, great question. And I did bring out the Celine Nano so we have a little bit more eye candy. And do the handles annoy me when getting in and out of this bag? They don't. And I'm very happy that they don't because there was, um, there was a moment when I figured maybe they're a little too close together and if I go to retrieve my items, they might kind of get in the way. But um, I'm very happy to say that when it comes to taking out your items it definitely has a little bit more play and it could be because the leather is, uh, is a little bit softer as opposed to some of my other handbags in my collection uh, for example the Givenchy Antigona I love that bag and even though the the handles are as stationary as these ones are those are a little bit more stiff so sometimes when you go to take out your items your hand brushes up against them but with this one you have a little bit more play again because the, the leather is a little bit softer and you can see everything at a glance so I don't have any issues getting uh, in and out of this bag with the handles and uh, do I use the handles I definitely do I didn't think I would um, because when it comes to this strap here uh, I don't use it on my shoulder I think I've used it maybe once or twice but for the most part when I use this uh, the strap I use this bag crossbody which is um, it's crazy because I didn't think like I said before I'd end up using it this way uh, but when I have the strap on here um, I actually like to um, I like to use the the handles whenever I'm kind of getting in and out of the car or just to give it a different look so sometimes I'll have this strap up here with the handles and I'll just kind of hold it this way. 
I know it's a little bit smaller and it might look somewhat awkward on me, uh, but no, I, I actually like using these little handles here and I haven't had any issues with, uh, with wear and tear on them either. You know, I thought that maybe the more and more that I use them, that these will start to kind of get, um, I don't know, that the, that the varnish here might end up cracking or something like that, but nope, no issues with it whatsoever. I do definitely prefer to use this bag crossbody. Um, very rarely do I use uh, this shoulder strap on my shoulder, but I do like to incorporate it with um, the shoulder strap and the handles just to give it a little bit of a different look, kind of like the Givenchy Antigona. Again, that's, that's the one thing that I like about that bag. I don't like using the strap on my shoulder, but I like the way that it gives it a little bit of a different look. So yeah, still madly in love with this bag. And um, oh man, the leather is so, so soft. So I like the fact that you have a little bit more play with it because uh, it's not as stiff as other leathers. Uh, but great question and hopefully that was able to help. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions uh, for this week's lineup. I have no idea when you'll see me, but you will see me again. Like I told you last week, uh, July is gonna be kind of, um, it's very sporadic. I'm gonna be all over the place, uh, but. I will still have my Minx Mondays and one other video for you guys. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I will see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.